Welcome, everybody. My name is Fari Al Muslimi. I'm specialized in Yemen and Gulf affairs in Chatham House. And after a while, I'm hoping that uh, the upcoming uh, cycles of dialogues and sessions on Yemen and its uh, regional affairs will be under focus. We are hoping to uh, a very insightful discussion with a very exceptional guest at a very exceptional moment, by the way, which couldn't be more exceptional. I'm grateful uh, to welcome in this 45-minute session. I would like to remind you that this session is on the record. Please uh, be sure that if you are hiding, you will be on the record. There will be simultaneous interpreting, uh, two for Arabic and one for English. You can grab your headsets. This session will go for on for 45 minutes. Let me first welcome a very important and distinguished guest, Abu Qasim, uh, uh, Major General uh, Aida Rus Qasim al Zubaydi, the Vice President of the PLC, the uh, Presidential Leadership Council, and President of the STC. We are quite delighted for this exclusive uh, chance for Chatham House for this discussion. I met Aydarus for the first time in 2013 in Al Dalia, Tiran's Mountains. The, the time was different at the time. There has been a conviction against him where he was trying to set up uh, his movement. He graduated from the Air Force and he played an important role for one year in the Air Force. And then in 1990, after uh, the unity in Yemen, he, he has uh, uh, played a, a, an important role. He, he might be willing to elaborate about it. I was not yet born, perhaps uh, he will elaborate further about his uh, perspective later on. Then he led uh, the creation, the formation of the Southern uh, movement and then he led in 1994 the first uh, military operation against uh, Houthis in Al Dalia, which was the first uh, governorate to uh, liberate from Houthis in 2016. He expressed uh, his uh, will to create an entity, a body representing the southern movement which was translated into the formation of the STC. Before that, he has been leading uh, Eden after the assassination of Saeed Jafar, the martyr. And after that, in cooperation and collaboration with the Arab, the Saudi-led uh, coalition, he has led many operations in al makha at the time and in many. Today, we have a host of uh, angles we will be touching on. We will be discussing the recent developments, the regional development, the restructuring and reshuffling of the STC, the situation within the PLC, the Presidential Leadership Council, and the self-determination right, if we had time. And perhaps we will uh, discuss the difference of living between mountains and uh, plains. Uh, yesterday, uh, I contacted a common friend, uh, a friend of us. So I told him that I will be in an interview with uh, your friend, uh, Aydarus al Zubaydi, and uh, I told him that. Uh, so, our point now is the recent developments. There has been uh, uh, a host of recent developments, a lot happening. What is uh, the assessment of the STC and what is the STC's vision for the current situation of the government? And after that, we might move to elaborate about the dynamics and the situation of the PLC and the dynamics development within the STC. About the government, you recently called on changing the government. What What is your main issues and your take? on the government. Uh, thank you in the name of Allah. Thanks to Chatham House. Thanks to Farah. Uh, uh, I'm here today to shed more light on the overall Yemeni 
cause. We would like to clarify that we are partners in this government, we are partners in the PLC. The current government has been faced with many challenges, certainly at the economic level. The most important of which is when the Houthis uh, hit the port of Al Nishima, where exports of oil were uh, came to halt, stopped. This affected the resources of the government, which has been grappling. We are going through a rather uh, hot summer where. Uh, temperatures uh, reaching 39 or 40s and the prime minister was outside Eden he was trying to get fuel however he got no response so the governor of Eden uh, said that he will do what he feels appropriate and he notified us, the PLC, the STC, telling us that unless you help us with resourcing uh, uh, fuel and oil for electricity, I would be sourcing it out by all means because people would start to die uh, uh, of uh, heat. So he went to the central. By the way, many people thought he, he, he solicited or went to the central bank. No, he went to Eden Port and he said that unless the government responds with supplying the needful fuel, uh, fuel sorry, I will be ready to set up a special commission to get the needful revenues to get the fuel. This is what happened. I mean, the government has become um, in kind of inactive or unable, disabled. People are struggling in Eden largely. Yeah, but we might have a new cabinet very soon. Do you think so? Yeah, we, we feel the need for a change because we feel that this government is helpless despite the fact that we are part of it, but we feel that it's incapable of carrying out its key tasks and I mean, just the, the, the mere provision of services, this government is unable of uh, providing. This is all we expect from it. It is helpless, incapable. Let's go back to the PLC. If this government is uh, incapable, so uh, what would be the, sol the solution given, given the situation of the PLC? The, obviously, the, the issues, the differences of the PLC reflected or overlooked the, the work of the government. Yeah, I mean, we have been achieving a lot, I mean, in terms of the, the, the government work, uh, including the formation of the Judiciary Council and uh, many other achievements. However, I mean, we need that regulation to be adopted because so far we have been uh, performing out of consensus and agreement, but we need the regulation to be adopted. I understand and I appreciate that there has been uh, conflicting political agendas and all have been holding on to their political agendas, but we should not undermine, I mean, we should not compromise uh, uh, the, the confrontation is standing uh, for the Houthis from the PLC to the STC. What can you tell us about the recent developments and updates, change in the STC? How can you frame them? Uh, you are jumping with us from an island to another island. We need to focus. Yeah, I mean, Farah says this is how we walk uh, across mountains. I mean, we jump. I mean, uh, the STC was uh, formed in 2017. It was uh, uh, limited at the time. Uh, we had the General Assembly for the STC, which is like the, the, the Parliament, which has been the executive. The STC is the executive power. We had the local leadership and local, local authorities um, across the, the southern governorates. We, we worked, we moved on with the STC, which has been expanding, whether vertically or horizontally, after four or five years, we felt that we needed to uh, rethink and revisit uh, with the pros and cons and look at uh, the performance of the STC in terms of assessment. 
So we are trying to complement it with all the needful bodies and entities, such as the Consultative and Advisory Council, and all other parallel uh, bodies and entities, such as youth, educational, we felt that this would uh, reinvigorate and uh, reinforce the effectiveness and the efficacy of the STC. And thanks to Allah, I mean, uh, this uh, reshuffling or restructuring process has been quite positive and fruitful, and it has been ongoing with the South-South uh, dialogue along with the South-South dialogue. Speaking of the STC and the PLC, one of the very common talking points is the uh, uh, negotiation, negotiation framework. There has been a lot about this point. But however, we haven't seen yet any document about this negotiation framework. We need to know more about it, which is the, the talk of the town, but yet we don't know uh, much about it. I mean, for the, the PLC negotiation team, there has been a team which has been uh, created based on consensus and agreement between the members of the PLC. However, it has not yet been activated. We, we insisted that uh, the southern coast should be on the table and should be a priority. And we are still pushing with this uh, idea within the PLC negotiation team. So uh, that the negotiation team would be prioritizing the southern cause within the political, the entire comprehensive political. So what is the term of reference regarding, I mean, what is the, the, the term of reference? Is it only limited to the southern cause? No, I mean the political, the entire political process is starting by 2012, because the, the, the political process is a continuity, a continuum since 2012. We understand that it has been a cesarean political process. When it comes, I mean, we are in total agreement with the, with the Arab coalition, however, in terms of the PLC. So b b if you need a, a surgeon, uh, uh, do you think that the UN will be a proper surgeon for a surgery if a surgery is needed for the political process? Yeah, but, but I mean, for us in the, another question, Farah says. What is your take on the recent formed uh, frame? Obviously, the, the conference of Hadramaut, basically uh, uh, over some discrepancies between Saudi and the UAA. What is your comment on the formation of? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this is a, 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 a rather tricky question, but I, I won't mind answering. I mean, honestly, we don't have much details about this uh, recently created body, honestly, to elaborate. However, we in the uh, STC are still leading the dialogue in the South, and this body is one of the important and key actors or bodies in the South. How far, to what extent, do you think that the STC should continue within or within its current shape or structure? I mean, the political process uh, uh, has many or multifaceted uh, uh, aspects and dossiers, and it's rather challenging. So there is no specific distinctive uh, timeline. No, um, I mean, don't you think that it's about time to rethink the PLC itself, given its structure, its construct? No, I think it's a de facto. The PLC is a de facto, and, and it should continue. This is one. So that it continue carrying out its objectives. How far are you uh, optimistic about, about the diplomacy between... Uh, we have uh, heard today, this morning, a point about uh, a diplomatic pilgrimage or Hajj between Houthis and Saudis. Obviously, some Houthis are, are going in Hajj. You, as Aydarus as Zubaydi, do you think that at some point you might uh, reach peace with Houthis? Well, honestly, Houthis are Yemenis, ultimately, eventually. 
we should accept this. They will be part of the uh, uh, picture. They will be in the north. They will have their uh, airport and they will have their freedom of movement. Uh, as if you are telling me that the south will be led by Houthis. Yeah, this is the de facto. I mean, this is the de facto situation. Going back to 1994, when you were in charge of protecting foreign uh, facilities and embassies in Sana'a, so uh, now you are pushing for the, the, the southern state. To what extent are you able to afford and provide guarantees and reassurances, certainly security assurances regarding international uh, maritime navigation and security to the world? Yeah, I mean, the South uh, established a civic state, uh, and it has been well known by the international community. We used to be branded as uh, extremist socialists. However, we are open, we are civilians, we are civic towards others. But simply, just the name has been changed from socialist to southern Yemen. When you think of re-establishing the southern uh, Yemen, to what extent do you uh, get any inspiration from the previous values and pillars of the socialist state in southern Yemen in terms of women enabling, in terms of economy? Well, I mean, we understand it has pros and cons at the time, that uh, state, I mean, the socialist state. But there has been justice at the time. At the time, there has been equity. You won't find anyone in need. People were quite satisfied in terms of their basic needs. Most people uh, had jobs at the time, and the state used to respect all the human rights uh, laws and values. And the Bab al-Mandib port was closed only one time when when there has been an aggression against uh, Egypt. And this was, the, the, the port was closed out of solidarity with an Arab state. I want to go back to the security aspect. Uh, what is the nature of the troops led by the STC? Militarily speaking, are these troops capable of uh, providing and affording security reassurances to the international community? First, in the STC, our policy is is a moderate, a, nation, a nationalist, but moderate. We are neither uh, Islamists nor secularists. We are just in the middle, in the center. What we are after, what we are pursuing is restoring our homeland. The military uh, troops are tasked with protecting the borders, the, uh, the, the ground, the land, the sea, uh, the space, the air. So our priority now is confronting the Houthis and ISIS and Al-Qaeda as well. And we are carrying on with our approach, which is well known for our brothers and our friends that we are aligning with the regional policies. When it comes to uh, confronting Houthis, in your perspective, who is more dangerous to the STC, Houthis or the Islah? Sorry, I, I did not catch that. <laughs> Which is more dangerous, the Houthis or the Islah party? I mean, dangerous to your project, the STC. We, we call them Islah and Houthi, the, 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 the reform. We, we dismiss, we reject, uh, uh, I mean, using uh, sectarianism or religious uh, beliefs uh, as a, a drive for, for political work. Because we understand that uh, our religion is a religion of uh, moderation. So extremism and terrorism is an outsider to our society and our communities. That's why we don't embrace uh, any uh, religious based, religion based uh, political movement. We hope that questions, we open the floor now to questions. We hope that all questions are limited to 
30 seconds. We might interrupt you at any moment if you go beyond. I mean, politely enough. Starting with the back, Andrew from the Financial Times. The Financial Times. Someone else? Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew England with the Financial Times. General. Oh, sorry, one second. Uh, the hmm. Two. Can you speak? Hello? Yes. Smile louder. Sorry. Thank you very much. General. And introduce yourself, please. Yeah, uh, Andrew England with the Financial Times. General, would you, would you and the STC commit to a referendum on secession in the South? Would you have a referendum in the South? And if you, the South did secede, what would be the risk of South-South factional fighting? Um, how would you assure people there wouldn't be an, the eruption of another conflict in the South? Thank you. Another one to the lady here. Someone over the mic. Yes, I would like to ask, is there a chance that the STC... And can you please introduce yourself? Oh, Karen Dabroska. I'm a freelance journalist. And I would like to ask, is there a chance that the STC would issue a unilateral declaration of independence? Because it seems to me that all these talks and being part of the government as it is now, they're basically going nowhere and you're just being diplomatic, hoping to get the best possible option from a bad situation. Is there any possibility for a unilateral, a unilateral independence declaration? And then the other question from Andrew, can the STC commit that there will be a referendum in the South regarding independence? Yes, regarding the first question, we are committed as STC and as people of the South to respect all international humanitarian laws. And we are committed with all the UN charters regarding referendums and any applicable laws. We are completely abiding by these laws and charters. For the second question, we are not reflecting on this. We are not considering any unilateral uh, independence declaration. And we hope to do this under an entire Thank UN you. supervision uh, and observation. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, the recent Southern Dialogue process that took uh, that concluded in Aden in May uh, was a quite unique experience in, in Yemeni politics in recent years. I wanted to ask you how do you uh, propose to proceed with the parties of the South that did not join in, in that dialogue? Uh, how will you uh, develop your relations with them after uh, the first round of dialogue that you've already had. Mm -hmm. Hand, higher on the left. Yes, Hand uh, Amiran, Masoula al Sharak and Nasawiya fi Mubadrat Masar al Salam, Aidan al Qadi al Ganubiya. سؤالي إلى لوعي دروس الزبيدي رأينا أن المجلس الانتقالي يعمل جاهدا على التصالح الجنوبي الجنوبي ولكن بالأمس تم هند أميران from peace trajectory my question is to uh, uh, Major General Aydaruz al Zubaydi. We understand that the STC is working relentlessly for South-South uh, uh, reconciliation. However, yesterday we have heard uh, a declaration about uh, uh, f the formation of the Hadrami, the Hadramaut Council. Uh, so th they are both interrelated questions. If you can elaborate to us more about the Southern dialogue in Eden, and how you are going to interact with the other uh, southern parties, and then about uh, the Hadramaut Council. For the dialogue and the other parties uh, in the south, this dialogue has been, uh, the preparation for this dialogue has started two years ago, and we have divided it into different phases. We have tried to include all parties as much as possible. We are hoping to include other parties in the future, with even to include parties who, who believe in a confederation or um, a confederal state. Hopefully, we will include them. We will 
try to include as much as uh, uh, as much parties as possible. And I mean, speaking of of the, the, the confederal confederation, have you ever considered the math over the last five years? Instead of being uh, president of the South, you perhaps become president of the entire Yemen. This might get a, a reasonable uh, uh, buy-in and it might be acceptable and plausible by the region. Yeah, I mean, I have a cause of uh, a, a homeland. I'm not after power. I'm not pursuing power. Yeah, but there might be even more and broader chances between Eden. I mean, a, a politician once said that we have tried uh, uh, cessation, we have separation, it did not work. We have tried uh, unity, it did not work. Let's try confederation. Let's give confederation a chance. So you mean, now the other question is about uh, referendum. Samir Gürsel, member of Chatham House, also international lawyer. My question to you will be in relation to law. Now, after eight years of civil war and hundreds of thousands of people being killed, Surely, after every war, peace follows. And apart from that, if United Nations instructs International Criminal Court for investigation of crimes against humanity in your country, will you cooperate with the court? Good. Uh, someone that was in the back. Yes, do that. The lady in the back. And please continue the good habit of keeping it short. Thank you very much. Dean and Ma'moon and Mudir al Iqlimi and Muladamat Madaneen for the Lasra. So, Alain Sarain. Awalan, Halfi Tafsir La Adam Wujud al Mara, Fihadi Mara, Fihadi al Tadil al Akhir, Fil Majlis al Riasi, but Kalimbil Husband Majlis al Riasi, Al Shail Akhar, Ruyat al Haikalat al Jiha al. Is there any explanation for the absence of women from the recent reach? Uh, adjustment to the PLC, the recent update. Second, the vision of restructuring the security and military system and how does this intersect with the Dura al Watan troops, uh, the Homeland Shields, how does this intersect? There has been many demands accumulated over the last few years. Now, if we want to an inclusive and just peace, there need to be transitional justice. In case there has been a ruling by the ICC to bring uh, perpetrators, would you be cooperating with the ICC? This is the first question. The second question was about representation of women within the PLC. And then the other smart question about the government, I mean, how on earth can we imagine a government governing in 2000? Uh, 23 without one woman in this government, no woman, neither in the PLC nor in the government. Of course, this was a, an important question, I mean, about the ICC. We are trying to be a state within the international community, within the UN, and commit and abide by all the international laws. And within our territory, of course, we'll be committed. However, if uh, there has been some crimes committed under the, uh, in those territory under the control of Houthis, this won't be under our control, of course. But within the PLC and the IRG, the internationally recognized government, we are committed. And we understand that uh, the law will uh, supersede and will preside over all. We are totally, completely, utterly committed to international laws regarding uh, uh, women. I mean, I've directly spoken to the president of the PLC and I told him that this government lacks any uh, women members or representation and we agreed that we should have at least one woman as president instead of and we are hoping to implement this i mean this is still on the table there is a pro project ongoing i mean initiative to bring two women to the government but not to the plc it's quite challenging to bring them to the plc another question regarding the security and military 
troops? Is there any initiative to unify them? And can Dira al Watan troops, the shield of the home of, of the nation, help in this? Uh, sorry, uh, I did not hear that question. However, over, overall, ultimately, all the troops and military or security should be under the umbrella of the Ministry of Defense. I mean, the, the Dira al Watan, the uh, home shield, was established in order and it is preparing uh, an a comprehensive vision to unify the military and security practices. Are, um, they were united in, in combating Houthis. So if the battle with Houthis is now almost over, what keeps you united at PLC? And also a second question is, um, how do you manage the conflicting interests between the regional powers that are supporting you, uh, namely Emirates and Saudi Arabia? Thank you. Farah is just repeating the question about the regional conflicting perspectives and how it is affecting the PLC. Yeah, I mean, after uh, b b confronting the Houthis or the battle with Houthis uh, ends, after we put an end to Houthis, we will have two states. I mean, we will sit and discuss all the issues and the differences between the South and the North. Uh, regarding conflicting interests, I don't think it can be framed or branded as conflicting interests. There is a military operation. It will uh, get completed and then we will get on moving, uh, move on with the political process, hopefully. I have a twofold question, first of which you have spoken about the viability, the legitimacy of the, the southern cause, and we totally accept this, uh, that it is a rightful cause. My question is to Mr. Uh, uh, Aydarouz, you usually uh, 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 pride yourself over connections to Emirates, UAA, so are the Yemenis uh, dreaming and aspiring for an independent South or rather a governorate uh, which is affiliated uh, with the UAE? Just an agent, a proxy to the UAE. What is the Yemenis in the South pursuing or aspiring for? from the refugee organization. My question is the power sharing in the PLC and in the government, is it a reality? Because based on my follow-up, I feel that the Southerners are not represented with more than 6%. Second, the, sorry, this was so quick, the interpreter, so the question, uh, again, Farah is uh, uh, paraphrasing it, that do you feel that there is uh, enough uh, and sufficient representation for the Southerners in the PLC and in the government? And the other question is related, related to uh, the relation between the South and uh, the UAE. Yeah, of course, I mean, upon the launch of the Operation Decisive Storm, the UAE supported the entire Yemeni people from Marib to the north. By the way, the UAE was not only supporting uh, the south, it has been supporting military operations across Yemen, whether in Babel Mandeb to the north. And it has been contributed significantly and positively. And we hope that uh, in the wake, in the aftermath of the political process, everyone will go and repair their doors. Regarding uh, representation, do you feel that you have uh, uh, equitable representation for the Southerners? Yes, I do agree with the question. I feel that it is uh, not fair so far. It is unequitable. There is no equity in representation for the Southerners in the PLC or in the government. Dr. Mohammed Qubati, 
The first question is to Fara. Why five years and we haven't seen any activity on Yemen in Chatham House? The second question is to uh, Mr. Aydarouz. The, the security landscape is in this array. How far do you think that uh, reforming the security sector in the South has to do with the entire, the overall solution in the South? Uh, Mr. Aydarouz, I have a question to you why do we in the south take i mean the burden of being secessionist and separatist separatists why do we we accept this accusation while it was the northerners who in fact the houthis already implemented the separation i mean for the security sector after the Operation Decisive Storm, the entire security system collapsed. I mean, we have uh, restarted uh, building the security sector from scratch. There has been a lot of uh, terrorism operations and the security sector has been overwhelmed. But thankfully, I mean, now we have done a lot. We have made a lot of leaps in terms of uh, equipping and training the police forces and the security forces uh, because uh, we started from scratch i mean uh, uh, from, from eden when all the uh, state institutions were in in sana while eden was not the the center for the government for mr abdul jalil i agree that it was the houthis since the houthi the houthi movement was created its core objective was taking over the north And it started to operate politically based on a sectarian uh, agenda so that uh, they revive uh, the imam concept of governing of power. They were the, the secessionists, the separatists, but in the South, this is a rightful and legitimate right of us. And we won't let go or give up until we realize this right. A question, Farah says, it's clear we understand that there is a vision, but let's assume arguably that in a highly unpredictable region such as the Middle East, where overnight we have wars and differences, if tomorrow we for out of the blue we found the arab coalition the saudi led coalition giving up on supporting the south uh, what would be your choices in yemen we understand it is a uh, moving sands we understand that politics is moving sands by the way so if the landscape changes, yeah i mean farah repeats the point uh, if uh, saudi and uh, and uae said that uh, our priorities are different now. So it is really quicksand uh, landscape. What would be, I mean, we will do all we can in order to realize our rights and create uh, the state of the South. Yeah, I mean, we understand that you, you have different uh, files and dossiers uh, unifying the security uh, uh, apparatus and the different factions whether military and politically have you managed to i mean to achieve all these uh, views i think that we have achieved a lot we have uh, created a unified operation operations room this is um, i mean militarily speaking however speaking of intelligence i mean leave the intelligence uh, file we can commit come to it again later on. In light of the current regional tension, how can you define your distance to Saudi Arabia? Where do you agree? What is the areas of convergence and agreement? Saleh Al-Batati, my question is to Mr. President. Chatham House recently uh, reported on uh, a heightening tension between uh, 
Saudi and UAE, and perhaps the settlement of account would be in Yemen. Yemen would be the stage. What is your message of reassurance to people in the South that there will never be any any manifestations of military conflict in Hadramaut? Yeah. The first one is regarding our relation and our position towards Saudi Arabia, where do you agree and where you disagree? We haven't been in any disagreement with Saudi Arabia. We have been on an ongoing uh, agreement. I mean, strategically speaking, there is no difference. And even in the future with Saudi Arabia, we are part of the region and we will be part of the GCC, a very active member of the GCC. Regarding the second question, your message to people of Hadramaut, what kind of uh, assurances you can send to people of Hadramaut. I mean, we in the STC, when we formed the STC, it was based on the population and the demographics. Hadramaut is a long established, historically speaking, region, and it will be an active part of the South. They will have their their own say, and they will have a very important part of the STC, and they they should have their own representation in the PLC, and we love them. It's not simply because we love them, but they are part of the PLC, uh, of the STC. Many of the STC leading figures are from Hadramaut. Um, hello, Ahmed Taif, I'm a South nurse. My question is regarding the executive body in the STC. What do you need to activate uh, the executive body? Yeah, re this question is regarding the, the, the concrete change you implemented and you brought about in the STC. What can you tell us in terms of the practicalities of these changes? Major General, you have focused in your responses about the challenge in the South and obviously you are prioritizing dialogue as the best strategy or mechanism to address these challenges. Is there any well-defined strategy to, to respond and to address challenge uh, immensing from uh, or uh, uh, sorry, emerging from the North? This is a very uh, important question. Perhaps I will go a bit uh, longer in responding to it. I mean, we as people of the South, we have our own societal and religious depth and dimension in the North in certain... And uh, I won't be exaggerating if, we, uh, if I say that we have... Uh, political alignment and alliances with many political actors in the north and this will continue and by the way we are uh, embarking and envisioning a future political and national collaboration within the plc and we won't uh, abandon our brothers in the north to be praised for the houthis and we will be supporting them and standing by their side in the future. The mic, please. My question is on behalf of South 24 Center. Mr. President, is the partnership within the PLC fulfilling the aspiration of the Southern people? Or do you feel that you might need to rethink it and revisit it? Yeah, I mean, as we said, that the partnership is unequitable, it is unfair as we perceive it, in terms of the political components, whether from the North or the South, or within the government, because we feel that 99% 90 of the Southern governorates are liberated, and they should have a larger proportion within 
within uh, the uh, government or the PLC. I mean, we can't uh, have enough time, but I can see, I mean, your team members are piercing me with their eyes that you have. Thank you very much to you, to our audience, and thanks to the interpreter. And a great thank you to you, our audience in the room, and we hope to host you in the future about more activities focusing on Yemen in the future. Thanks to Rennie for her coordination activities.